We're here in Port Coquitlam at Colony Farm, and we're talking to Derek Matthews. You're the founder and co-chair of the Vancouver Avian Research Center, correct? Yeah, absolutely. And what we're doing today is bird banding. Now, a lot of people don't realize what it is. It deals with migratory bird species in a way to sort of track, identify them, uh, you know, sort of uh, gather information about the wonderful species here, right? Yeah, exactly. The Vancouver Avian Research Center is a, a registered charity and a volunteer organization dedicated to wild bird uh, research, conservation, education. We conduct year-round bird monitoring and banding to identify causes of avian population change right. and to help formulate management actions to maintain stable or increasing populations. Uh, VARC's mandate has two key components. Um, the first is to uh, collect uh, data and right. research support to safeguard habitat for birds. And the second is to provide extensive public outreach and education to raise awareness of environmental issues as they relate to birds. Amazing. So these birds uh, that we're looking at right now, they've been uh, sort of uh, caught in these mist nets, which yep. we will uh, look at a little bit later. And now they're being, uh, you know, they're sort of being identified and, and uh, you know, information is being gathered about them. Uh, but it, it, they're not in distress, right? This is just part of the process. They're, they're, they're not at all. Uh, and scientific data is obviously the most important thing that we're collecting uh, to safeguard habitat for birds. Habitat loss and degradation are the major causes of bird population declines and is the single largest factor affecting migratory birds like this yellow rump warbler. Right. Uh, crossing increasingly fragmented landscapes. And in these urban suburban landscapes, uh, local and regional parks like Colony Farm provide critical oases to uh, breeding and migratory birds. Uh, the birds of the world are in serious trouble and, and common species are in decline right. all around the, yeah. the globe. Uh, habitat fragmentation and climate change pose serious threats to more than half of all the bird species in Canada. Okay, Derek, we'll leave it there. Thank you. That's awesome information. And you guys look at that amazing yellow rump warbler, one of the many uh, migrant birds here in the uh, lower mainland area. And we're learning all about bird banding here with the Vancouver Avian Research Centre. Look at that. <laughs> wow. Just let it go. Beautiful. We're with the Vancouver Avian Research Centre. Derek, uh, we're banning the birds. They get caught in a mist net, but they're not distressed. And this is all part of the scientific process with uh, studying them, right? Yeah, absolutely. So each bird that we catch, uh, like this Lincoln Sparrow, uh, Lincoln Sparrows are um, long distance migrants. They're neotropical migrants. And it's obviously very important that these guys uh, are able to find stopover sites like Colony Farm, mm -hmm. uh, where they can rest and refuel ahead of long migratory journeys. Um, our top priority at all time is the safety and welfare of all of the birds that we work with. Um, I'm holding this bird at the moment in uh, the photographer's grip, yep. but I'm going to teach you, Thor, to hold it in the bander's grip, which okay. is basically um, a grip like this. This is the safest way to hold a bird. Okay. As you can see, it's not distressed. You just form a loose cage around the bird's body. And then when you're ready to release the bird, you gently release it on your open uh, palm. Okay. So I'm going to pass it to you. You can just uh, see the, the bird banded oh, yeah, there, uh, there, the band. Um, so what I'm going to do, you're just going to come gently over the top of the bird. Okay. Gently over the top. A loose cage. Nice loose cage around the bird's right. body. Pop the wing in. Make sure that the uh, the wing is in perfect. All right, and then the hand coming down here. Yeah, and then All you right. just on your flat hand palm, just release the this bird. Little Lincoln Sparrow. There he goes. And you want to be sort of in your brush, right? So absolutely you near the brush, yeah. so that they, that they have somewhere to go. Okay, very quickly. Um, water is important for backyard birds. You can bring that in as well. Yeah. Uh, yeah. You know, feeders are good, but water is the most essential thing when yeah. it comes to backyard yeah. birds, right? Without, without doubt, the number one way to attract birds to your garden is to put out copious amount of clean, fresh water. Mm -hmm. um, uh, birds don't have sweat glands like humans, but they do need to bathe every day to keep their plumage in good condition, especially for these migratory birds making these long distance migrations. And of course, birds need to uh, to drink as well. All right, let's um, bring uh, that one out if we can. And very quickly, you guys here need, need funding, obviously, to keep this going. Right? Uh, absolutely. We are a volunteer organization and registered charity, and um, we obviously do need funding to uh, to support the, the work that, that uh, we're doing. And really, every little uh, does help. There you go, so Michelle. So this is a beautiful orange crown warbler. Beautiful, look at that. Um, and if you hold your hand out flat uh, on this one, we can probably do uh, this, get this bird to uh, lie momentarily on its back <laughs> and then just roll it into your other hand to release it. And uh, there you go. And then the bird will go. Pretty cool stuff, Ooh. Michelle. Wow, that's so cool. Migratory birds are the name of the game today. We're at Colony Farm. And uh, Derek Matthews, you're here with the Vancouver Avian Research Center. And we are doing bird banding of migratory species. This is how they are temporarily restrained. It's a mist net. Yeah, it's a mist net, which basically forms uh, soft pockets of net um, of uh, netting. And as birds are flying through the brush, they basically fall into uh, the soft pocket and mm -hmm. are restrained harmlessly. Um, we then basically extract the bird, place them into uh, soft cloth bags, 
um, with the uh, bird you can see here, right. the uh, common yellow throat, and then basically take the bird back to the uh, banding station for processing. I am so excited because common yellow throat, one of my favorite local birds here, and one of the migratory species that uh, kind of found in more marshy areas. Right? Yeah, they really are. They're fa found low down in wet thicket, so they uh, they like uh, the uh, the marshy uh, yeah. habitat. And you can tell um, them by their which which are exactly yeah. they 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 witchy 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 calls yeah. all over uh, Colony Farm Regional Park. Sort of that raccoon and this like is, band. Yeah, and this is a, a gorgeous, a gorgeous male. Uh, you Beautiful. Can see. Look at that. <clears throat> and this is uh, an adult male. So we've basically um, identified this bird to species. Yeah. We've aged and sexed, sexed the bird. Uh, the bird is banded with a uniquely numbered. Um, aluminum uh, band uh -huh. and the bird is then uh, assessed for fat. We uh, also weigh the bird and then basically the bird will be ready for release when you want to hold and release it. For, right. so right. for uh, again, let's do that. We'll do it away from the um, net. You're going to hold it in this uh, bander's grip okay. for me with, with yellow throats just like that and then you're just going to gently and watch the bird's eye. Always concerned about bird okay. safety and welfare yep. and when you're ready just let the bird go. Perfect. There you go. And very quickly, uh, this is open to the public on the dike walk here at Colony Farm, but this particular area we're in, uh, you can't come into because there's a lot of uh, research and work being done, but yeah. uh, you guys do field trips as well, right? Absolutely. A large part of our work is public outreach and education to raise awareness of environmental issues as they relate to birds. And we do that through uh, presentations, through public events, through workshops, our family days, um, and visitor programs. Nobody who uh, visits the station, as you've done this morning, and holds and releases a migratory bird can fail to marvel at their beauty, their yeah. fluid lives in four seasons and distant places, and the ecological intricacies they require to survive. And these programs really do compel people to uh, value birds and place importance on protecting them and their habitats. Excellent, good tips, Derek. Thank you very much. Thank We've got you. one more segment coming up later. So what we're doing here now is uh, looking at the bird banding. So take us through this uh, process a little bit here. Yeah, sure, Thor. Uh, well, the first thing we do when we bring birds back from our net rounds is to uh, identify the bird to species. Mm -hmm. Each species takes a specific band size so uh, Debbie at the moment has a, an orange crown warbler one of the lutescent subspecies and as you can see she the first thing she does is uh, to open the band and then carefully place the uh, band on the birds uh, tarsus wow. um, and this is a, a two-stage process to make sure the band is fully closed the seam is tightly closed so it can't be caught in nesting material uh, once we do that we um, we will measure the bird's wing. We measure the unflattened wing called wing cord, so the length of the longest primary in uh, millimeters. Okay. Um, and then the length of the uh, tail feathers or retrices by inserting a, a, a rule between the central uh, tail feathers to measure the longest uh, retrice. Um, we age and sex the bird um, using different molt and plumage criteria. Assess each bird for uh, fat deposits. Fat is very important because it allows us to, to assess the value of the habitat that the birds are using. Okay. Um, and then each bird is basically uh, weighed using a small digital scale. All right, Derek, let's get you out here because we want to kind of wrap things up. We'll let one more bird go, a uh, common yellow throat. But let's talk about the importance of gardens for backyard birding. Yeah, gardens are very, very important for, for birds crossing increasingly uh, fragmented landscapes. Um, radio tracked thrushes um, during spring migration, a whole uh, research project was done, and 50% uh, of the birds landed mm -hmm. within 55 yards of a house and stayed there all day. Mm -hmm. So even small pieces of habitat are critically important for migratory birds crossing these increasing fragmented landscapes um, so it is important that people uh, uh, do, uh, do do have uh, bird friendly gardens uh, mm -hmm. and yards and make sure again they put out water for our migratory birds yeah water's um, key. copious amounts of clean fresh water is the number one way to attract uh, birds to, okay, uh, great. to a so garden water is the key we'll get one more bird to let go and you guys need a lot of funding obviously with the Vancouver Avian Research Center right? yeah absolutely yeah, I okay. mean it is a volunteer organization and the uh, the more that we can do to basically uh, save our songbirds uh, the better but obviously we do need funding to right. uh, help us to do that there we so, go we'll uh, let this little guy go and there he goes stick around for more bt